Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Lucy Gray, live from Palm Springs, California, where I've been traveling for work this week. And I'm really excited to have uh, to host our fifth webinar for National Lewis University's TIE 575 course uh, on staff development. And joining us this morning is Julia Francis from Chrome Warrior. And I'll let her introduce herself in a moment. But I'm really excited about this platform, which I uh, discovered through Q and um, and some of the volunteers at the Q conference, the Q National Conference, um, and it's a it's a platform for gamifying your and personalizing your PD, and you can design your own experiences. and And Julia will get into that, um, but we have found it to be really a really interesting and flexible platform. And um, thanks to Chrome Warrior, we we were able to use it for my online. Uh, global Education Conference this past fall. So um, to give you everyone a little bit of background, my uh, online course is on staff development and my students are going to be developing an online or, and or face-to-face -face, uh, professional development experience. And I want them to, to uh, be able to utilize a variety of ideas and resources and things like that. And so I've brought in friends and and other people to, um, I'm going to mute you for a second, Julia, because it, um, the typing, we can hear somebody, we can hear the typing, just FYI. Okay, there we go. Um, so, <coughs> so my students are gonna be designing a professional learning experience um, pretty soon. We're, we're starting to near the end of the quarter. And uh, these webinars have provided a lot of creative ideas and tools that they may want to incorporate into their final benchmark project. So these have been, uh, I think, really useful and practical webinars um, with people who have lots of experience who've given my students a lot of advice and it's, it's been much appreciated. So everyone has kind of built, everyone has unintentionally kind of built on the other one of the, these webinars. And, and just in the last session or two, we've started talking a little bit about badging and gamifying. So this is like a really, this is perfect timing. Uh, not really planned that way, but it, it's turned out to be really great timing, Julia. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to you where you can introduce yourself and give us some background on Chrome Warrior. And uh, we're so thrilled to have you. So thank you for getting up early on the West Coast to do this. There you go, you're unmuted. Okay, great. Thank you for the introduction and um, good to meet everyone. Um, as Lucy, Lucy mentioned, we are on the West Coast. Um, we're based in Seattle, my company, Alp and Spruce. Um, just a little bit of background on myself. I come from about 25 years in software application development and consulting. Um, in those years of uh, work, I had the uh, pleasure of working with higher education, K-12, and public sector for about 20 years. Um, I also worked with the University of Washington for three years doing online content and curriculum development for intervention studies that came out of the university. I'm going to, uh, at this point, I'm going to share my screen. Lucy, can you see those slides fine? Yeah, we can see it. If you want to put it in, into presentation mode, it will, yep. then that, that'll be even better. That, that looks perfect. That's awesome. Great. Okay. Um, so Alpen Spruce is the company that developed Chrome Wire. A little bit of history about Alpen Spruce. We were founded back in 2006. As I mentioned, my background with K-12, along with uh, my partners, we have large-scale enterprise IT experience working with a lot of the um, large companies here on the West Coast, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, um, a lot of the, the larger organizations, but we also have the expertise in the K-12 market. Um, the solutions that we've been developing over the past 10 years in working with districts like Palm Springs, Desert Sands, quite a few in California, are all focused on business improvement for K-12. Um, so a volunteer, um, volunteer system, for tracking, inventory management, data warehousing, database, and that type of thing. Well, what happened in 2014 in our relationship with Palm Springs, they reached out to us and they said, 
we're really interested in a solution that will help us with our one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative rollout. So they have um, roughly 1,500 faculty teachers that were rolling out a one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative and they needed to be trained on it in a certain time period. Um, I think they had maybe four or five coaches, coaches in TOSAs that were able to support that initiative and they really didn't feel like they had what they needed um, in person workshops and traditional PD for um, achieving their goal. So they came to us uh, and said, could you help us develop an online platform to support that professional development and learning focused on the Chromebooks? So that's actually how the name came about with Chrome Warrior was through this Chromebook initiative and the PD application that we developed. What that then moved into in the course of the, or moved um, into over the course of the past two years is now a fully hosted software as a service solution. The way that ChromeWire works, it's very simple for teachers, faculty, um, administrators, and principals to go into the game. Um, you just go online through any type of a device. You can use a, a mobile, a pad, a iPad, tablet, PC, what, what have you. You can um, log in through any browser, and you log in through your district credentials. This was really an important feature in developing Chrome Warrior because half of the time with technology, the barrier to access and engage is going to be the, the largest challenge you have in getting people um, who aren't as familiar with technology on board. So that was one of the things that was in. Um, the other aspects about Chrome Warrior features is it is an online standalone PD type of an experience but you can also leverage it for blended and flipped learning. Um, some of the districts that we're, we are working with will host a PD event in the future. And what happens is, is you have a variety of different people that are gonna be attending this event with different skill sets. Some are very introductory basic and they don't know a lot of, um, a lot of the, again, intro and basic things that you need that you um, will be using in starting the workshop. Others are well advanced. So what you can do with Chrome Warrior is you can use the platform um, to do some introductory prerequisite type of ex uh, exercises, have your uh, participants do those exercises ahead of time on the platform before they even join the event, and then you have everybody on the same page. So just an example of how we use it for blended. And then the other thing about Chrome Warrior that Lucy mentioned is um, the way that our platform is a lot uh, very different than other products is the ability to personalize it, um, customize it, and brand it to align to your district, as well as, um, of course, create all of the different types of content and pedagogy that you want for your organization. So as far as what we were trying to improve and in developing, what, what were our objectives in developing Chrome Warrior? Um, we've talked a little bit about Palm Springs and their Chromebook to one initiative. For them, it was a matter of scaling. They had 12 to 1,500 teachers that needed to come up to speed on a particular um, area, a, a learning area, if you will. Um, the other thing that we're looking at is how do we reduce costs and how do we reduce the disruption to the classroom? Um, very widespread now across the country is the lack of substitutes in the classroom. So even if your teachers can get out and do the PD, finding someone to come in and be a substitute along with the cost of the substitute is a, a pretty large impact right now to school districts. And then the other thing overall is just the disruption to the classroom and the students. Um, third thing we were looking at was evidence and did the training take. So, so many times you have teachers that will go to workshops, they'll take the day off. Um, it's great training, but when they come back to the room, are they able to apply that? Um, so that it impacts the student experience. And so one of the things we were looking at in developing the platform is, is there a way that we can, if wanted, the, the, um, the game could have evidence required? And then last, and what I think is most important, is how do you make, how do you make development engaging? And how do you make it fun? How do you make it easy to launch? And 
Um, one of the things that we are strongly involved in in our community is staying in touch not only with the districts that are already on Chrome Warrior, but with the um, community of people that are now talking about badges and online PD. The, the biggest thing that we hear from them is choice and having something be self-directed. So many times I think that um, teachers have offers and opportunities to go to professional development, but it doesn't always apply to them. And so we wanted to develop a platform where they would have the choice to go in and select from the items that are most important to them, that are meaningful, and again, are aligned with their skills and what, um, what's required. So those are some of the things that we're looking at in our um, development of our platform and our product. At this point, I'm gonna move to the demo, unless we have any questions. Excuse me. Any questions? I think we're I, I think we're okay with. I don't see any questions in the chat yet. So if if people have questions, just put them in the chat, and um, and I'll let Julia know periodically. Thank you. So what I'm going to do the the way that our platform works is you have players and you have an admin, and you can have as many administrators as you want um, to show you what a player experience is. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as who is our, um, our mock teacher player. If you will. As I mentioned, it's very easy and simple to log in. You go to chromewire.net, which is our website, and you go to game login. When you click game login, it will ask you um, how you want to log in. We authenticate with Google, Gmail, as well as Office 365. So you can do either type of sign-in. I'm going to go in through Gmail, and I'm going to go in through Emma. And again, Emma is my um, teacher player. The thing, um, feature we have with Chrome Warrior is we have the ability to have multiple games. So if you are a school district that wants to set up a game for your teachers, maybe a game for your administrators, principals, any type of faculty, you have the ability to do that. In this uh, view right here, what you can see is what it would look like as multiple games. We have a Chrome Warrior pilot and we have programming robots. I'm going to go ahead and go into the Chrome Warrior pilot and it automatically takes you to our board. Um, the player dashboard is great because what it does is it acknowledges and um, shows the achievement of the players that have recently achieved and completed sorties activities in the game. And we also have a leaderboard so you can see who your top weekly are and your top players for the life of the game. Um, we have a couple up here. I won't go into a lot of detail um, out of respect of time, but under profile, you can set up um, and associate yourself with your particular school. If you want to have a category more detailed than school, you could add grades, you could add departments, and that type of thing. It's customizable. The other thing that we have here is badges. Under badge, what this allows you to do, as you're a player and you're leveling up, you can embed your level badge in your email signature with a link of uh, code that we have there that you can just embed. What we are doing as an organization is we're responding to the open badges and the open badge community. So by mid-March, our goal is to have open badges out and released. What this will do is it will allow players to little, it'll allow districts to issue design um, or digital badges that you can take with you and upload those into a Mozilla type of a repository that will hold open badges. So right now, currently, the badges is are all within your district game, but starting mid-March, we'll be releasing that option to take your badges with you. So the other thing we have here is the activity dashboard. I mentioned we have um, all of the activity and then we also have the entry point into the game. You can get to your game board up here by clicking my game board or simply by going to play. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to view uh, what it looks like for Emma as the player in Chrome Warrior. The way it is structured is over here to the left, you have the player, what school they're associated with, the level badge that they're at, um, a summary of points and rankings, and then relative scoring. So different than the, um, the front activity dashboard where you had 
just top players and top weekly performers, you also get here relative scoring. If there are special badges, they will show up here. And I'll, uh, when we get into the game um, here in just a minute, I'll talk about what these special badges are versus level badges. But as a player, if you earn special badges, they'll show up here. And again, come mid-March, those special badges will be, um, will be able to take with you in the open badge community. So the way that the game is structured, we have at the very highest level, um, a level. Within each level, are missions. And I'm going to collapse these real quick so you can see. This game right here that we've created is a pilot game. Um, we've created five levels, and within each level are these four missions. You can think of mission pathways or um, categories, if you will, modules of learning. And within each mission, you have a number of activities. So these are the activities what the gaming world refers to as sorties. These are sorties that players play in order to earn points. When they earn points, those points will tally up to a mission point goal, and then all of your mission points will roll up to this level goal. These points and these missions and levels and everything are unlimited and completely customizable to the game. Um, we do have templates that we offer to our customers to guide them in designing the game. In a minute, I will also show you a catalog that we have of pedagogy that's already been built out by a number of school districts. Um, but I do want to emphasize that the, one of the valuable things about Chrome Warrior is you can put any type of content on the platform for learning. So let's take a look here and see how Emma would play the game. She's going to go in. Oh, before I do that, I want to show you real quick. These that are highlighted in red mean that these sorties are required, and the ones that are in blue are, um, are open. When we first were talking about our design of the platform, uh, we discussed choice. And this is where choice comes into play. As a designer, you can say, out of all of these sorties, these three are required but you need to get 200 points, you can select from any of these options to get your 200 points. In this next session, 21st Century Classroom, you can see here there are no mandatory sorties. So if I'm a game player and I really wanna emphasize my learning under Google Slides and presentations and maybe some of those tools, then I have the choice to do that versus using um, or going into another activity. So there's just an example of that. Um, so this one's mandatory for the uh, teacher. I'm going to go ahead and go into take a screenshot. When you enter into the sortie activity that's required, um, on the right here, anyone that has recently cr uh, completed that sortie will show up on the right column. This is really nice for collaboration, and if you have a question and maybe your TOSA isn't available, but you can see that a peer and somebody within your school just completed it. Um, it's just nice to have that as a, uh, as a uh, collaborative tool. What you have here on the top is you have uh, the title of the sortie and you also have points that are available as a player. From learning goal all the way down, I'm going to page down, this area here within the game is completely customizable and this is where the districts can upload the material that they want for learning for their um, players. In this case, the way that we have formatted this sortie is we have a learning goal, which is basically the activity or task description. We have success criteria, which is the evidence. Um, what is it that they need to achieve to complete this and get their points? And then underneath that, we have a help center, which is basically resources. The way that Chrome Warrior works, is you are able to, as a game designer, you're able to add links here, images, video, and what have you, and the videos play within this frame. So you don't have to worry about it taking the player out to another tab in their browser. So I'll take a look at this one. Um, it's taking a screenshot with your device. You have um, the option to click print screen or use Chrome extension. Um, the evidence is to paste a screen capture or attach the file. 
So I have a Mac. I'm going to go down here and I can play this video. After I've played it and I've uh, taken my screenshot, which I'll do right now, I then go to record achievement. This is the area where the player gets to submit their evidence. Um, in this description area, you have the ability to write freeform anything that you would like. It's unlimited. This is a nice area for if you want the teacher to provide a reflection or potentially add a link to a Google Doc or um, a link to something that they have created that they're not able to upload. If you want to upload a file, you just go here. The only limitation that we have on this is 10 meg in size, but you can upload images, JPEGs, Word docs, uh, PDFs, and what have you by just clicking here with file. I'm going to go to um, my screenshot I just took. And once it's uploaded, you're going to get a little green check mark here, and then you just click record achievement. Here I can say um, I use my Mac for my screenshot, and then I record it. Once it's recorded, it's going to take me back to my game board. What you're going to see is take a screenshot has now changed from this blue diamond to this yellow clock. What that signifies is, is that I've done the work and I've submitted it, but now I'm awaiting approval. Approval happens on the administrative side of the platform. Um, typically administrators are, or I'm sorry, uh, typically approvers are administrators within a district, um, tech coaches, and TOSAs. So this is how you um, complete an activity within the game. Right now I'm awaiting approval on this one because it's yellow. And if I have completed it and it's been approved, you're going to see a green check mark. So all of these in yellow are waiting approval, and the ones in green are approved. If there's no questions at this point, I'm now going to switch and log in as myself, Julia, and then I can show you the administrative functions, how you do approvals, and our catalog. We do have a comment from Anthony who um, noted that he really liked the social features of what you just showed us. Um, oh, great. The other piece is, so, so can you go back and, and explain that when you, when you, by mid-March, you're going to have the badging um, feature so that they're open badges. So they're going to go to, where would people put them or find them? Would they go to openbadges.org? Is that the idea? Or I believe so. So there's, um, Mozilla Backpack is a, a community effort platform where you can store your badges. My understanding is that there's been a little bit of shift in the organization, and I know that Open Badges, openbadges.org, is probably the best resource to go to. Yeah, Mozilla's um, so, not doing it anymore. I think they pulled out of badges altogether. Yeah, yeah, so okay. I, I do right. believe. Okay. Yeah. And there is another nonprofit that I understand is underway with developing um, something very similar to Mozilla Backpack for that effort. Okay. There's also, just so you know, um, a badging summit uh, the Saturday before ISTE in June in San Correct. Antonio. So yes. are you guys going to be at that? We will. We will be at the okay. badge summit. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. All right. Carry on. Okay. So um, if there's no other questions, I'm going to go to the administrative side of Chrome Warrior. Wait, we have one more. Sorry. Uh, Anthony, sure. Anthony would like to see reporting. Uh, he's, he's excited to see the reporting features. Is it possible to search for teachers in an organization who have or have not earned badges? That's a, a question for going forward. Absolutely. And I'll show you that on the administrative side as well. Okay. Awesome. All right. So similar to Emma, as an administrator, I'm going to log in and I'm going to log in through my account. And when I log in, I'm going to have the same view that Emma did. Um, I'm going to log into Chrome Wire Pilot. And as you can see, I have the same um, features and the same view as her. And just um, to note, administrators are also players in the game. So tech coaches and um, admins and what have you are absolutely able to play the game, and it's encouraged. The only thing about the administrators is when they complete a sortie or an activity, 
they automatically get their points approved because they're the approver of their points. So they have a little bit of an edge on the competition in that they don't have to wait for approval. Um, so as you can see, the game board, the activity dashboard badges is all the same. Um, the administrative features are what are different for an admin. So before I get into how you approve Chrome Warrior um, achievements, I want to talk briefly about the different types of user roles that we have in the game. So far, we've seen Emma, who's a player, and now I'm logged in as an admin. When you go to the user profile, I'm going to go into edit, I want to show you these roles that we have here. We have the player and we have the administrator. Um, the administrator can do everything. They can set up games. They can modify games. They can go into all of the different player profiles, um, approve achievements, and what have you. Some districts we work with are quite large, and they have a lot of different types of learning material that they want to build out for their game. You know, this was initially developed for technology integration and around Chromebooks, but since then, people are coming to us and saying, well, I'd like to write a pathway around project-based learning. I'd like to write one on makerspace, um, maybe math instruction and bilingual language. There's no limitation to doing that, but the people that write that content might not necessarily be those tech coaches and TOSAs. They might be from other departments. So what we've added is this role in users called a level designer. What the level designer will allow you to do is give that permission to people within the district so that they can go in and help write the sorties and activities in the game without having the admin privileges. The administrator does the final publishing and the approval of that learning material, but you can have other people in the game helping you write and draft that material. So that's what a level designer is. And then achievement reviewer, again, this was a feature we added from uh, feedback from some of our larger districts. They said, you know, we only have a couple people um, that are admins right now and we need help approving these activities because we have so many players in the game You can give this achievement reviewer Access and permission to other players within the game or other people within your district So they can go in and approve achievements even though they aren't necessarily an admin. So just a few um, uh, User roles the other thing we, when I had shown you that activity board where you saw all of the achievements completed posting, um, we fully integrate for social media with Google Plus and Twitter. So if a district has a Google Plus and Twitter account, you can integrate all of the postings that happen in the game with your district accounts. And it's really nice because it's kind of a showcase of what the district is doing for their teachers for PD and how they're investing in it. And as an individual, I can also add my own Twitter account so that when my achievements are approved, it will also show up on my, um, on my Twitter. So just some features there from the user standpoint. Now what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go into achievements. So you can see what it is like um, for an admin once the game is designed to approve. Um, question that came from Anthony was being able to filter. So very easily what you can do in this view is you can sort by name, and that would be alphabetically. Right now I just have a couple teachers in here, Noah and Emma. Um, the other thing I can do is I can sort by the sortie title. This is really nice when it comes to approving because you can just go in and you can approve by the sortie activity. Um, what I also have though to drill down on data is this filter. And I can go in here and I can pull a specific teacher and sort and find them. I can also sort by different schools. This is very helpful if you have um, maybe a site leader at each location and you want to give them that approval um, access so they can go in and maybe just approve for their school. So you could filter by school. Same thing with games. If you have multiple games, you can also um, go in and just drill down on your game. So that's how uh, the filtering tool works. I'm going to go in now and I'm going to look at some of the work that Emma has done. Um, one thing that's nice that we've added is this description. So imagine if you've built out a game with five levels, multiple missions, and then anywhere from five to ten missions within each one. 
it's going to be hard as an administrator to remember what was that evidence that we were actually asking for um, from the teacher. So we did this take a screenshot that Emma completed earlier on. When I click on description, I see exactly what Emma, the player, sees. And so here I can look quickly and remind myself what was the evidence that was required. It's a screenshot attaching a file. And when I click on evidence, I'm going to see the description that we typed using Mac for my screenshot. And then I'm going to click here on the link. So when I click here, here's the image that Emma uploaded. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to approve it. When you approve an activity or sortie, you can very quickly just click approve and go on to the next one. But if you want to provide feedback, the platform will allow you to do that. You can add a note, um, just encouragement, and then you click approve. But the other um, status we have is instead of just approval, we also have suspend. You use suspend in the event that your player doesn't complete the activity correctly. Maybe they're missing something. So I'm going to look at Emma, um, her task, develop your PLN. And under the description, what we're doing here for the goal is we're asking her to um, expand and develop her professional learning network. And she needs to list 10 or more individuals or organizations that she's following. And we have a link here in the Help Center to the educators that she can follow. So when I look at her evidence, she has provided people that she's following, but she's only provided five. So instead of approving it, I'm going to suspend it. And when I suspend it, I have to give her a reason. And this is actually required. Anytime you suspend, you have to provide a reason. So um, you could say, great job on the first five, but please provide five more to complete this sortie. And then I'm going to suspend it. Once I suspend it, it goes off of this um, view because this view right now are only the ones that have been submitted. What I can also do in filter is I can go here and I can look at people that have had suspended sorties at any time. And this is really nice because if you have somebody that's had something that's been suspended for maybe a few days or maybe a couple weeks, you might want to go back in and maybe um, see how they're doing and see if they need some help. So that is what it looks like to do um, achievement approvals. I'm going to go now back to Emma and I'm going to refresh her game because I want you to see how it's changed now for her, the player. So take a screenshot, we approved. So it now has a green check and she has the 50 points. Develop your PLN, the one we suspended, is now a little bit different though. It's got this pause mark, um, pause symbol. And when I go in and I look at the sortie, the comments that I sent her are right here. The other thing that our system allows you to do is whenever you make a comment as an administrator to a player or a player comments back, that then sends an email notification to the players. And so it's really get nice, again, for collaboration. Um, you can go back and forth between the administrators and the players and give each other tips, talk through things, and what have you. So that is um, how things have changed on Emma's board. And, oh, I'm sorry, let me show you really quick. So for Emma, um, what she needs to do, because this has been suspended, she can go in now and edit her achievement. She can add uh, five more uh, Twitter accounts here, and then she can update and resubmit her achievement. When she updates it, it now goes back to that yellow, which means it's submitted for approval. And I'm going to flip back now to Julia, and I'm going to refresh my admin um, screen. So you can see that her achievement, develop your PLN, is now back on submitted. The evidence shows that she's added her five more accounts, and then I can go ahead and I can approve it. So that's the workflow and basic steps in approving achievements. It's really straightforward.
what I'm going to show you now, if there's no questions, I'm going to move to how you actually build out a game and our catalog. Okay. Um, Anthony asked a while ago, and I didn't catch it, if there are any features for discussion. Features for discussion, meaning between players? Yeah, um, Anthony, do you want to grab the mic and, and tell us exactly what you mean? I think he means like threaded discussions as a, as a form of evidence or something. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, hi, Julia. I was just wondering. So on the different activities, it would be really interesting to see, you know, if people could post questions and answers and things like that. So what we have right now is we have the ability to post questions and go back and forth again between the player directly to the admin. What we don't have are those postings back and forth across players. That is a, it's a feature that we're looking into right now, just again to expand more of the collaboration across players. Um, but right now that's limited to players and administrators or players and approvers actually. Okay. Thank you. You bet. I think we're good otherwise uh, in terms of questions. Thanks, Julia. Okay, great. You bet. Um, so as a, as a game designer, I mentioned you can, you can build as many games as you want. You can create as many levels and missions within those levels. What I have right here is I have a game that's been archived and then those two games that we saw, um, Chrome Warrior Pilot and Programming Robots. Um, I can very quickly drill down and click on my list of players here if I want to. Um, if I want to see the back end, the design um, view of the game, I go here for games. Up here is a way to just collapse it, the whole, all the levels. And similar to the player view, you have all of your levels. Within the levels, you have your missions. What's different is you can see here how many points in red are mandatory, required, how many you are um, asking them to do to complete the missions and the levels, and then how many are available in total. When I click under each mission, I can see all of the um, different sorties that are available. If I wanted to add a level, I would just go here and add a level. If I wanted to add a mission under level one, I could go here, add a mission, and let's say I want something here under um, uh, maker space. I just go in and uh, here is an intro mission on makerspace activities. If I wanted to put a badge there, I would upload a badge there and then I can just create that mission. When I create the mission, I'm going to page down here, you can see now that mission is here in level one. And then to add sorties, which are these activities here, I just go here and I go to add sortie. So I'm going to show you just briefly um, how to do a sortie um, from scratch. So I'm going to do Google Keep and uh, how to get organized. Keep lists. Couple things with adding sorties um, and how you can how you can categorize them. Points here, you just want to have that in line with the other points and the level of effort. Um, everyone's different in terms of how they want to do their point setup, but we absolutely um, encourage that you know you want to have the simple tasks obviously have lower points, the harder ones have higher points, but you want them to be very um, somewhat similar. The, the way that the game is built out, and again, we encourage because of, of adult learning and how adult learning um, engagement happens, is you want these learning um, objects to be in short increments. So most of the districts we work with, we help them in developing their pedagogy so that the sorties and activities average anywhere from five to maybe 15 minutes at most. Um, that way, the players can go in, they can do one or two activities, go back out and then proceed with the rest of their day. If you want them to be required, the sortie, you just click here for required. Um, it automatically defaults to requiring evidence. Um, if you don't want that though, you can uncheck it. And I'll talk a little bit about this catalog here in a minute. As a game designer, I can publish my 
sortie as soon as I develop it. I'm not going to do this right now because I want to show you what draft looks like. Um, but I'm going to go here and I'm going to design my sortie. So as you saw before, we had, um, I'm sorry, we had learning goal, which again is just the, uh, the task. We had success criteria. And then we had um, help center. This is like the, uh, the resources. And success criteria is the evidence. This is basically a content management uh, system container where you can go in and you can choose any color you want. You can format it however you want. Um, and then here you can do your description. So this would be a uh, create a Google Keep list for your classroom. And I can change that so it's a little different. And then the success criteria would be um, upload a link to your Google Keep list. For Help Center and resources, let's say I want to embed a video. Um, the way that this container works, you can do links, you can do images, as I mentioned, and videos. I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab um, a Google, Google Keep 101 video. I'm going to find something interesting on YouTube. And once I've grabbed the link, I can go over here, insert it. And now my video is inserted in the frame. I can modify the display, do alignment. I can also change the size here in case I want all my um, video frames to be similar. So this is just a real quick to show you how you build out a sortie. It's fairly straightforward. Once you have a format and a design that you like, you can just cut and paste that into each sortie that you're developing. And then if I want to um, add a badge, I can go here. Let me see if I can find a badge. And here is a Chrome Wire badge. And save it. Once it's saved, again, it's going to be in draft mode. It's not going to be published yet. If it's published, it has we have this green check mark. If it's in draft, it has this blue envelope. Um, and then as a admin, I can go in and edit that when I'm ready to publish it, and I just go in here to publish. This feature is really nice to have things in draft because you can be, you can launch your game with level one and level two already completed, but you can be in um, the game and behind the scenes as an admin building out levels three, four, and five without your players um, even seeing it. So I've now published it, and it's got the green check mark. Real quick, the last feature I want to show you is the catalog. Um, the catalog was developed because we have so many districts that are all trying to solve um, similar issues and challenges, again, especially in the technology integration and technology training. And so rather than people reinventing the wheel, um, trying to create content that already exists and is out there, we created this catalog. Um, the districts that you're seeing right here are districts that are currently engaged with Chrome Warrior and or piloting Chrome Warrior. And all of them have said, we want to be part of the community, and we're very happy to um, support and share anything that we develop and build um, with other, other districts. So what you can do is you can go into a district. I'll choose uh, Grenada here. I can go into their game. I can look at the different um, sorties. They've customized this a little bit. Instead of having just levels one, two, three, four, five, they have their levels as warrior, champion, gladiator, ninja, samurai, and black belt. So they've made it pretty fun. Um, I can go in and I can copy an entire level to my game if I want. I can also go in and I can copy missions. So the way that that works, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to um, I'm going to copy tools here. I can go into the game that I want to copy it into, which is Chrome Wire Pilot. 
I can choose what level I want. I'll just go ahead and put it into my first level and then I can copy it to my district. It's really straightforward. Um, when you copy it into your game, it's going to be in draft mode, which is nice because then you can go in and review everything before you publish it. The other thing that the catalog allows me to do, though, instead of going in and reviewing all of these districts' pedagogies, I can just search on a topic that I am looking to build a sortie about that I need some help. Um, so I'm going to go in and look at anything that is related to Stammer. That's important to me. So when I go in, now what I see are all of the different sorties that have been built out that are related to SAMR. Um, what I can do is I can click on this right here, and it shows me what the task is, um, what the evidence is, and resources. And if I want, I can just go, sorry, I'm paging down quick. I can go down here to copy my district, and I can bring this one individual sortie into my game instead of a whole entire mission or level. Um, we, we love this feature. It was, it was something that we had two or three districts mention to us um, in, in passing, which was, well, what are other districts doing? How are they developing it? And I wonder if they'd be willing to share. And um, we heard enough about it that we said, okay, that this is important. Um, what it does is it, it gives you the to start and design, develop and launch a game in a matter of weeks um, or days for that matter if, if you have the um, ability to, to spend that time. And it just acts the launch of the professional development in an enormous way. The other thing is, is it gives the ability for the districts to get insight and see what other districts are doing and other challenges that they're hoping to solve within their activities and pedagogy. So they just get great ideas on tools and technology that they can share within their district. Um, last thing, I won't go into it in detail, but we do have some notifications that are great. One is this broadcast email. You can send emails from within the game to all of your players, and you can do that by a, a school, or you can send it out to all the players at once. And then periodic emails will allow you to send out emails, um, or I'm sorry, set up notifications. So if a teacher has not um, come in and played in a certain time period, you can set a notification that every two weeks or every three weeks, they get a notification saying, hey, we haven't seen you in a while, come back and play. And that's where we hope to encourage engagement and keep that ongoing communication going um, between the district and the ed tech group that's hosting this with, um, with the players in the district. So that is what I have as far as um, showing you the actual game. Before I go out of the game, I wanna see if there's any questions, anything that you want to see within the game that I haven't showed you yet. I think we're good. I don't see anybody saying anything specific, but here's, here's my, um, what I'm thinking about, about the two, particularly in light of the two people who are here for the live event, um, Irene runs an after school or school supplementary program on cultural awareness, um, and she often has to train the people that she works with. So I'm thinking that that this might be good for kind of making sure that her employees have kind of a baseline training on the philosophy and, and, you know, structure of what they're doing with kids somehow. Um, and then, and then the, my question for Anthony is, um, and it's not really a question for Irene. It's just an observation that maybe would be useful. Um, but then for Anthony, I think one of the struggles you've mentioned is that sometimes people aren't that engaged or that excited coming. He, Anthony works for the university, by the way. Um, Julia, he works for Nationalist University, and Great. and his he's the tech integrator or tech specialist for the university. So um, he has to work with faculty, and and often it's it's related to things that they're not that excited about. And I'm wondering, like, if this would be, I'm wondering what Anthony's thoughts are in terms of kind of retooling the professional development that he does with 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 faculty 
would this be useful? Would they like it? Would they not? Can you see creating challenges? I mean, I think it would take you a lot of time, but I'm wondering what you think, Anthony. Sorry, my dog's going to be barking. Um, <laughs> this really seems awesome. I think we've been looking for a platform that is a lot like this for a long time now. We just didn't know of anything that was out there. I really like what I see so far. Um, my only concern, though, is that I think a lot of our faculty show a strong preference towards online synchronous learning. So this is a, an asynchronous platform. So I think it could be used to support it. I think along with some synchronous events, this would be a great platform to use um, in support of those synchronous events. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, we do have a, a higher ed institution. And I think earlier I asked like on reporting, because another thing that like we'd want a system to be able to do is, you know, identify who and who who has or has not gone through each of these um, games and missions and earned what badges, et cetera. Oh yeah, I apologize because I didn't show you that. Um, real quick here, Anthony, we have this um, under admin, we have completed sorties. When you go to completed sorties, you can search and sort by level, mission, and the activity that's been completed, as well as points. And then under this filter, I can go in and I can um, drill down by player. I can drill down um, by school and by particular levels. So I can see at a macro view what, le what levels have been completed, but I can drill down to a micro and look at specific sorties and missions, and then that is all um, reported here and exported in a CSV format. Yeah, it's really awesome. I can, like I said, we don't really have schools, I guess, but we do have, I do, so we have different colleges. We also have different campuses that each of our um, faculty members are assigned to, so maybe we could use it like that. Yeah, and this piece here that says school is, again, customizable. That's just the category that was set up, but as an admin, you can change your categories. I'll share with you um, one of the ways that Chrome Warrior has been used completely outside of the education realm is with a, um, a group of individuals organization out of Wisconsin and uh, in the Midwest. They are a group of snowmobile manufacturers that got together and they are um, sponsors of an organization for snowmobiling and um, mountaineering in the Northwest or um, Northeast. They wanted us to create a game around avalanche preparedness and winter um, safety mountaineering. And so we have a platform that's called Backcountry Ascender. And it's basically what you see here, but all of the content and the badging and everything is completely different because it's been written for, um, for alpine mountaineering and, and snowmobiling and avalanche preparedness. But what the, the, um, manufacturers of the snowmobile did is they invested in the development of the content and the platform. You actually have different uh, manufacturers that have sponsored badges and they have offered this up to the public for free in an effort to have people be, you know, more safe out there in the back country. Very cool. Yeah. So I guess, Oh, you're probably going to cover it later, so I'll just ask this maybe at the end. I no, no, you can ask it now. Go for it. How much does all this cost? <laughs> well, the, um, so the, well, let, before I answer that question, I want to show you very briefly a couple of things on some slides. Um, for a time check, Lucy, we're going a little bit over the hour. Is that okay? That's totally fine. And if people okay. have to go, they have to go. But I think this is really useful and valuable, and I would, I would love to see you complete your thoughts. So go for okay. it. Okay. What I want to talk to you about a little bit, Anthony, is, is how, how the platform can be customized for your organization, for your school district, for your university. Um, something that's very different, again, than a lot of these off-the-shelf online uh, type of, of experiences is, is you go in, you take a training, and you come out. Um, or you go on to an LMS like Canvas or um, Docebo or... Edmodo, what have you, and you go in and, and it's, it's theirs. It looks like theirs. Um, what you can do with Chrome Warrior is you can brand your platform, again, for your district or your organization. You can create badges, or we, as an organization, provide services where we will create the badges with you. And then there's an incentive strategy. When you ask about pricing, Anthony, one thing I wanted to um, 
to note was the software side of it is less expensive and potentially what you develop is an incentive strategy. So for some of our organizations and districts we're working with, they have attached stipends um, and compensation to the level achievement within the game. And you, you can do that. Um, you can provide uh, product incentives. And if it's focused around technology, some districts say, you know, once you reach level three, you get an iPad or a new PC or laptop for your room in the classroom. Um, other ones do fun things like t-shirts, uh, stickers, other kinds of swag, uh, water bottles, lanyards, that type of thing. And so the thing that's really fun about launching this as a program, um, and we, again, we help support that through helping develop promotional material, communications, and campaigns, is you can really make the, um, the PD platform your own. Right here are some examples of some school districts in Southern California that have, instead of calling it Chrome Warrior, they've rebranded it. Um, Rio did Paddle, and instead of having levels one through five, they did cla <clears throat> excuse me, class one through class five, like the River Rapids. Um, Ocean View did Tide, and Tide is an acronym, as well as their theme is all around um, the waves and, and beaches. Um, Pleasant Valley did a real fun one here. Here's their badge with their backpack and their camera and their compass. And their um, game, instead of having levels one through five, they did um, longer periods of uh, travel. So their first level is a day trip and they have a really fun badge that's a day trip badge. The next one is an overnighter. The next one's a weekend getaway. And then finally they have a road trip with a real fun a VW bus. So you can see that branding the game and having some fun is where the gamification part comes in. And it's really neat too, because when the teachers have products like the t-shirts and the swag that are associated with these badges and the branding of the game, they wear them on campus. They have those images in their, um, on their Twitter accounts and what have you. So it's around that collaboration and that feeling of, of fun and belonging with your district. Um, here's an example of some of the badges we've developed. Uh, this, of course, helps not only with individual achievement, but also across the school and with district recognition. Um, badges you can have at the sortie level, at the mission level, or you know, a level badge. You can do as many badges as you want within the game, but most of the organizations we work with do level and mission badges. Um, so here's some things we did. Chrome Wars is Desert Sands. So they did levels like Wi-Fi Strikes Back, The Phantom of the Desert, uh, Attack of the Chrome. They had a lot of fun with theirs. I mentioned PV Journey. Here's their road trip badge and their um, overnight. And then Wainimi is doing a real fun uh, beach theme. Theirs is called Coast. Again, it's another acronym. And uh, their tools badge is the snorkel here. And their level one is the surf's up. So that just gives you some ideas of badges. We help in um, the promotion side. Again, it's really important you can launch a game um, and it's great and everything's wonderful, but if it doesn't stay in front of the teachers and the players, then they're probably going to lose sight of it because they have so many other things on their plate, things that they're doing. So we encourage um, web content for them to be able to go to it and easily see how to get started. Um, announcement material, and then ongoing promotions via email, via reaching out with that broadcast feature within the game, and of course, social media is huge. So that's why we have that integration with Google Plus and Twitter. Um, we talked a little bit about the incentives and the engagement. It's really fun to also promote what those incentives and achievement are so that the players get that recognition. Um, again, some do things like t-shirts, here's water bottles, um, Lucy, you did this with GEC, where once every, every individual that um, received the level championship um, status, they received this certificate that showed that they had done the, the work. And then here's some examples of the Twitter uh, postings. So what, what we've seen as far as engagement, um, one thing I'll note is all of the districts we've worked with to date this is a voluntary tool 
that is available for their teachers. This is not anything that has been introduced as mandatory, but as a voluntary PD program, we have seen um, and on average about 40 to 45% of the teachers are in the game and playing within the first 30 days of the launch when they've done you know, a, um, a district-wide launch versus pilot launching. Um, the average engagement in the game itself of people that are in there and playing is 60 to 70 percent and we just love to see that and we talked a little bit about it with the catalog um, the thing that we are really motivated by and passionate about is the chrome warrior community that we're building um, we get so much good feedback from every player that plays um, teachers that are in there administrators about how to make this better and it's just fun to see how much the game has evolved from when we started with Palm Springs back in 2014 to, to now, early 2017. We've added all the features like the reporting, the catalog, um, the open badges that are coming, and again, all from feedback from people that um, have been playing the game. So we love that. Um, from a pricing standpoint, to answer your question, Anthony, we offer this, um, it is software as a service, so the way pricing works is a per player charge or fee um, to get started, and we do annual contract agreements for um, the players in the district. We, as, as I mentioned with the, the numbers here, we don't have 100% of district players across the board. We do have a couple districts that have almost 90% or more of their teachers playing. So when we first license it, um, example is if a district has 500 teachers, we typically would say, let's start with maybe 300, 350. We don't charge them for every teacher that is in their district. The per player price um, ranges from $16 per person per year. So that gives them the Chromeware platform access for the whole year up to $20. And that ranges 16 to 20, depends on how many teachers or how many players you have. And it depends on the number of years that you sign up for Chrome Warrior. So if you sign up for up to three years, or you have as many as 500 players or more, you get the, um, the discounted rate down to $16, but the standard rate starts at 20 per player. I would love to see like a version of this that um, allowed people to dabble with it a little bit because uh, well, we have that, Lucy. Ooh, ooh I, that, I'm not, this is not a plant. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. No, we, uh, that's something that we just went live with about a month ago. If you want to add this link, it is chromewire.net slash demo. Okay. I'll go into it right now. This is on our main website. So when we first started, you saw this game login. That's where you go if you are a district that is already engaged with Chrome Wire. If you are not and you would like to just go to our demo game, you go here to play Chrome Wire. There is uh, instructions here about how you log in, how you um, choose your account and set up your profile and start playing. But you want to click here to play Chrome Wire demo game. Log in with your account. I'll log in with me. And the only difference between what you saw today in my pilot versus what you see here is when you go to my game board, we only have two levels in our demo. We don't have all five. But you'll see the missions. We've got three missions. And in each one, we have a number of activities. We have some badges. So if you're earning badges, and um, everything else is the same. What you will not see are the admin, um, but you will be able to see all of the player features. So, so here's what, I'm, what I would actually really like. It, what I'm suggesting is something different. Um, this is good because, I, because people need to play with it to get a feel for it. But if there was an opportunity, like I'm just thinking with my students here, if there was like a limited version, like you could make one level or you could have two users or you know, some, some way so that people could actually create something for free, but then there's incentive for them to purchase it later. Like, that's a great uh, idea. You know, just because I think a lot of, I think the, the, the model in ed tech is so, what's so difficult is finding a business model from, you know, when you're an ed tech company. 
that's going to generate money, but you, and, and teachers are also used to getting things for free um, right. to a certain extent. So that's like, how do you balance that? And, and so, so anyway, that's, that's just one suggestion I would have for you is I don't know how, from an engineering perspective, how hard that would be, but like, mm -hmm. if there's a way, like if there was a light version of this and then, and then some compelling re reason for somebody to play with it and then be compelled to say, Oh my gosh, this is so great. I really want these features that I mm -hmm. can't get that I can't get um, unless we upgrade. Because I think the pricing is pretty reasonable. You know, back in the day when people bought more software software, it was probably about twenty dollars a user. You know, for mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to think for, you know, you know, what programs specifically, but that was about about the price. Like I'm thinking like uh, inspiration was a mind mapping tool. I'm sure it's still out there. And mm -hmm. it was about $20 a user when I was in the classroom. So yeah. um, anyway, that's just something that I was thinking. Yeah, and you know, interestingly enough, when we have a, a partnership, we're working with Q. And what Q has is they have workshops. Um, one of them is Q Launch. And these are um, workshops to help people get ready for um, level one certification for Google. There are an Apple um, distinguished learner and so when in working with Q when we were talking about the licensing and costs it's more expensive for them to print out a workshop binder you know material bound than it is for the licensing to put all the material online and then the other benefit is is this material is available for your teachers players whomever um, all year so it isn't so much that you know you go in you do the work and then you're done it is it continues to be a resource and some of the things that we've heard from the teachers is they'll go to their game to find out how to do something rather than now you know go to google and try and search it they'll go there first so it's it's provided them with a really valuable tool and again unlimited um, in terms of how many different games you can build and how much pd you can support for everyone within the organization, not necessarily just for the teachers now. Yeah, I can see, I can see how this could be used as a, you know, as a guided tour of tutorials and that sort of thing. And I wonder in like in Anthony's instance, if it could be used to, you know, I would try to blend it and use it in, in conjunction with the, the synchronous online stuff. Um, Absolutely. Because I think this is like, I think when I do the same, I, as, as a user of that synchronous online training, um, I have to go through, you know, like um, anti-discrimination training and, you know, basics for using D2L, which is the platform and things like that. And I think what happens when I take those kinds of things is I'm hurrying through it. Like, what can I do to get through it as quickly as I can, <laughs> as opposed to really engaging with the content? And I think this might be like, you know, I'd rather have somebody watch a video and then do this and provide some evidence that they've actually engaged with it. But then you need somebody on the other end who's approving that stuff. So anyway. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and the last thing I want to say to my students is it takes some time to develop these things. This is not like an out of the box, you know, uh, program for, for professional development and and when we did it for the global education conference julia supported me massively more than she really need than she should have <laughs> um, because to get it to get it launched it's you have to kind of i would recommend um kind of mapping out what you want to do for each of these activities and challenges and sorties and 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 then it will, and then and, and writing it up quickly, like in a Google Doc or something like that, so that you can copy and paste it into this platform. I think the kind of the pre-planning piece is makes this go a lot quicker. Um, and I think that's critical, Lucy. And I'm glad that you mentioned it because a lot of people do see this and they think, "Oh, well, it's all here." Um, what we built is there, and we're welcome to share that. But I think what you want to start with is. What is that end result that you want to see out of the learning? You know, what is the student experience supposed to be in the classroom? And from there, what does the teacher need to learn in order to make that student experience the way it should be? And from there, you develop what you think your mission should be, what those pathways should be. Um, we do have a couple tools to support that design. Uh, we have a design template where you can map out at a high level 
the missions and the sorties. And then we have another sheet that you can use where you can actually go in and craft all of that out and write it out. So again, it's, it's much easier to just drop it into the game. Um, we very much encourage, you know, whiteboarding and architecting that out. And we help support that in every launch that we do with every district. But um, I think sometimes it, it's viewed as, well, it's really simple. I can just go in and, and cut and paste what somebody else has done. And I think when you do that, it's kind of like in software development, they call it spaghetti code, where you just start mixing everybody's code together and you create this just massive amount of spaghetti. And you really don't want that. You, you want to put a lot of thought into what are our objectives and goals and then pull what has already been created from other districts and use that. But then whatever isn't there, then you get to create your own. And, and we, we just have some fantastic people that we've worked with um, over the past year that have created some very good, robust content. Um, but you want to make sure that that is aligned with what you are trying to accomplish before you build your game. Uh, that's really good advice. Sorry, I was talking without unmuting. Um, so everyone, uh, Irene had one last question. Is there a student version? I, I mean, I think this is really geared towards students or teachers, Irene. Like, you're, as the, you're the professional developer using the platform to create the task for students or for teachers, right? I mean, couldn't you use this with students, Julia? Yes, you could. Um, so we have not yet, but we have had many districts say, okay, our teachers love it. And in fact, they've showed it to their students in the classroom because it's a competition and the students are all rallying around their teachers to be the top competitor, which I think is really fun. Um, and what we've added on the administrative side is you have the ability to create private games or protected games, which is important on the student side because you don't want all their information to be visible. So you can create, you can create a, um, a protected game and just put the student email addresses. If they, you know, if they have a district email address, you can put that into the protected game area and then create games you know, by, uh, by student lists, if that makes sense. Anybody else have any questions? Any final questions before we, I let you guys go and enjoy your Saturday? I guess everybody's pretty quiet. Okay, thanks uh, Anthony and, uh, and Irene for coming and hopefully more of our students will see this after the fact. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about badging in the next week too in general um, about how maybe you can incorporate that into your final benchmark projects too. So I'll probably send out some more resources related to this topic that may help you with your thinking. Uh, Julia, thank you again so much for taking time out of your Saturday. And we will definitely spread the word and Anthony will follow up. I'll give, I'll give Anthony your email address if he wants to follow up with you about uh, doing a demo for National Lewis or, or something like that. And, Sounds uh, great. and I will talk to you next week about, about uh, Q as well.